Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be going over is creating something which looks a little bit like this where we're going to be creating a highlight and outline object material so we can highlight objects like so so we can actually have an outline of them as you can see here. So this would work great for x-rays or anything so you can see them through walls or anything along those lines really and it's very easy to customize and set up and change for your own personal games as well. So I'm just going to get right into it so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our material. So to do that we're going to go to control space to open up our content browser, right click and create a material and I'm going to name this one highlight matte like so, open that up straight away. Let me just move this onto the correct monitor like this. And the first thing we want to do is in the bottom left down here we have the details panel for our material. We want to change the material domain from surface to post process and then we can leave everything else the same on here so you'll notice we now just have the emissive color under the highlight mat like so as that is what we want to create the actual outline of our object and next we're going to go straight into just creating the different nodes inside of our material and now this is quite a lot and can be quite confusing to wrap your head around initially but bear with me and we'll try and get through it so we're going to go quite far over to the left just to give ourselves plenty of space so the first thing we want to get is we want to get a scalar parameter so to do that we can hold on s and left click to get it like so, oh, there we go. And then what we're gonna call this is line render width. So as you can guess, the first thing we're gonna be setting up is the width of our line. So we'll have that there like so. And we're gonna give this a default value of 0 0.3. So the values I'm using are the ones you saw at the beginning of the video in the preview, and it's just ones which I personally like, but you can obviously change all of these different values to get it set up perfectly for how you want. Then straight out of this, we're going to go into a multiply node, so multiply like so. And what we want to multiply this by is going to be the view size. So we're going to right click and get view size coordinates like so. So it's view size but under the coordinates. Then out of this, we're going to get a seal or keel, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but the C E I L, it is seal, I've just looked at it, it's actually pronounced seal. And after this, we're then going to get a clamp, so clamp like so. Now the minimum default for this we want to be 1 and the maximum we want to be 2. And this is now going to go straight into the multiply node simply like so. And that is all we need to do for this bit here. But out of the multiply of this we want to go into another multiply. So we'll go straight out into multiply. And the B of this wants to be the scene texel size like so. We're going straight into there like this. Let me just move these over to keep it organized like that. And then out of this multiply, once we've got all of this bit here set up, we want to go into some masks and appends and more multiplies before we start going into these scene textures. So again, this can be a bit confusing, but bear with me. So we'll come out of the multiply here, straight into a mask node. And the one we want to get is we want to get the component mask under math there. So we'll component mask, and you'll notice it says R and G, as we have the values of R, G, B, and A, but R and G selected. We want to untick G so it's only R. That's obviously red, green, blue, and alpha. We just want the red. Then we're going to duplicate this and connect that into the multiply as well. So we now have two of them, with this one being just the G, like so. And then the top one is going to go into an append vector. And same with the bottom one, but into its own append. And this one I'm just going to put into B, like this. And then for both of these, we want another scalar parameter. So we're going to hold on S, left click. This one. I'm just going to leave the default name as parameter, connecting that into B and A like so. So we now have something which looks like this. Then in between these appends, what I'm going to do is get another scalar parameter like so. Again, leave this with the default name as it is, as that works for me. And then these are going to go into some multiplies. So out of the append, I'm going to get a multiply, and that'll be for both of them, a multiply for both like this. And again, this new scalar parameter it's going to connect into both of those multiplies like this. And then we want to do some addition. So before we do that, we're going to scroll up and we want to right click and get the screen position nodes under the coordinates once again. And we're only going to be using the viewport UV instead of the pixel position. So out of viewport UV, we're going to get another component mask like so, leaving this as the default of R and G. And then we're going to hold on A, a left click to get an add. And we're going to do that four times. We have four different addition nodes like so. 
and then the mask RG wants to go into A of all of these additions. So we're going to connect that into each one like so. So into A of them all like that. And then the B of the top one wants to be this first append node that we have here. So the append of the R wants to go into there. The second add wants to be the multiply of the first node. Then the third add wants to be B of the second append. And the final and fourth add wants to be the multiply of that second multiply like so. So I'm also just going to double click these to get some root nodes just to keep it looking nice and organized as this can get a bit messy quite quickly so we want to make sure we're keeping it organized and easy to read. So this will also help you to understand fully what's going on so you can see it a lot easier so I hope this helps for you to understand what connects where. So let me also just move these about a bit so it looks a bit nicer like so. And now we're about halfway through the code. So let me just move this over a little bit more, as again, we need a bit more space than this. So what we want to do now is right click and get a scene texture like this. Then under the scene texture ID in the details panel for it, we're going to go from scene color to custom depth, like so. And we're going to leave it as custom depth. And then we want to select this, hit control C and hit control V to duplicate it another four times. So we now have five in total like this. I'm going to move these down a little bit like that. And then we have five of these nodes and four additions. Pretty much what we're doing is the top one doesn't connect into anything, but the other four have the corresponding addition nodes going straight into the UVs. So the first add goes into the second scene texture UVs, the second goes into the third, the third goes into the fourth, and the fourth goes into the fifth, like this. So we now have something which looks a little bit like this. Now what we want to do is we want to do some subtract nodes. So if we can right click and get a subtract like this and we can duplicate this three times so we now have four in total like so similar to the addition nodes we had before it. And the top scene texture custom depth wants to go into the subtract so we want to get the color going into A of the subtracts so we're going to be subtracting from this like so. Let me just move those out a little bit out a little bit actually. And then the color of the other custom depths wants to go into the corresponding subtract nodes. So color goes into B like so. Basically just line them up like we did with the addition nodes as well. And again, you should now get something which looks a little bit like this. Then we want to add the subtract. So again, this is quite a lengthy process. It might be a bit confusing, but once you finish the whole thing, you can just go over it and look at it a bit more closely to see what we're doing. So once we've actually subtracted these from each other, we want to add them. And the reason we're adding them now is because we want to get all of these different values into one value. So we're going to hold on A once and twice to get two addition nodes, connecting the A and Bs like so of the subtracts like this. And as I said earlier, we want to get these into one value. So we're going to get one final addition node for these. So we're then going to add those additions like so. So now we've basically condensed all of these values into one value like this. And let me actually move this out quite a bit further once again. So I keep moving it, but I just like to have more space. Then once we've got all of these addition nodes, we want to divide this. So we're gonna come out of this and get a divide node like so. And what we're gonna be dividing by, so B, we want to have as the edge angle fall off. So we're gonna hold down S, left click to get a scalar parameter, naming this edge angle fall off like so. Like I say, connecting that into B there like this. And the value I'm going to have is this, and the default value will be minus 100, like so. Out of the divide, we're going to get a subtract node. If I could spell it correctly, subtract, there we go. And we're going to leave B as a default value of 1, so we're not putting anything else in there. It's just subtracting 1. And then we also want to put this straight into a clamp as well, again, like we did earlier. Minimum and maximum, again, leaving as our default values of 0 and 1. And now we're nearly at the end. This last bit is going to be the main section where we're going to be deciding the color and actually setting up as the post process. So what we're going to do first is right click and get a scene texture once again. This time we're not going to change it to custom depth, but we're going to change it to post process input zero. So now it is actually going to be post process. The color of this is going to go into a LURP, so we can hold down L and left click to get said LURP, connecting A into color there. And then B, we want to have as the glow and color. So if I were to move this up a little bit, what we can do is hold down three and left click to get a constant three vector, i.e. a color. 
and we're going to change this color to be whatever color you want. I personally want to have it as a yellow like this as I think that's going to work best for me. So you can obviously set it to what you want. And once you've got that, what I'm going to do as well is right click the arrow and convert it to a parameter. And I'm just going to name this one highlight color. And this just means we can then change it later on more easily if we wanted. And it also gives us access to the values of R, G, B, and A, i.e. red, green, blue, and alpha, which we do need to have. So we're going to drag out the red and we're going to make float four, like so. And it's a four because we want to have all four values here. And we're going to connect the red into X, green into Y, blue into Z, and alpha into A. Perfectly like so, because RGB, X, Y, Z, A, and A. That makes perfect sense. And the result of this is going to go into a multiply. So let me actually just move this over a bit once again. Result will go into a multiply node, like so. And that multiply is going to go into B of the LERP which we created earlier. But what are we actually going to be multiplying this color by? Well, that wants to be our outline glow intensity. So we actually know the intensity of the glow. That one's pretty self-explanatory. So once again, we're going to hold down S, left click to get a scalar parameter, naming this one outline glow intensity, very simply like so. And I'm going to give this a default value of 0.5, as I want it to be not too intense, but I also want it to be fairly intense to have it shown easily in the tutorial. Now in the game that I'm creating, I've actually set it as 0.05, just so it's not too prominent again just for the purpose of the tutorial and making it a bit more intense and this is going to go into the b of the multiply like so once again the multiply going into the b of the lerp now the alpha of the lerp is going to be our clamp which we created earlier simply like so connect this over here and this lerp is now going to connect into the emissive color of our highlight material and this should now be it completely done and set up and working for us so let's hit apply and see if this works. So let's also save this now like so. Now this might not look like much at the moment in the preview, but this should look different once we actually get this onto an object in our scene. So we can now minimize this, and how do we now put this onto objects? So what we need is a post-process volume, as this is obviously a post-process material. So you should have one by default, but even if you don't, I'm gonna create a new one anyway. So we're gonna go to the quickly add to the project up in the top left up here. We're gonna go down to volumes, and create a post process volume down here like so. And now in here, what we're gonna do is search for materials, open the post process materials, add an array element, click choose asset reference, and then we want to choose the material which we have. Now I named mine highlight matte like so, perfectly like this. And now if you want this to affect all objects in your level, what you need to do is give it an unbound or infinite extent like so, we're gonna take that, which means this will now affect everything in the level. However, if you only want to affect it, whatever's in the box, untick that and just place it over what you want it to affect. For example, if I wanted it to only be this cube, I can just place it over the cube like so. And there we go, like this. Now you'll notice that's not doing anything and that's because we haven't actually set up this cube to have a highlight on it. So if we select the cube, what we can do is remove the unbound search there and search for something else. And that wants to be render custom depth. And we can just tick that there like so. Now, if we were to unselect this, you'll notice that's still not actually been highlighted. And I think the reason for that will be, I've actually forgotten one tiny thing. If we go back into our material, go to param underscore one that we have here going into the multiplies. I left that as a default value of zero. However, it was meant to be minus one. So my apologies, I did miss that there. And we can just press apply now like so. And it still looks like it's not working entirely and I wasn't too sure why this was happening so I decided to just make the box a little bit bigger and there you go it now works so I'm not sure why because it was completely within the post process volume however making it bigger did make it work as you can see it's now got a faint outline on there like so so what I might do is make this bigger and more intense to again show it off better so we can go in here and we can do change the intensity to let's say one apply and see what that looks like you'll notice it's now a lot more prominent like so and what we can do is also go over here to change the width so let's also put it as one hit apply to see what it looks like and you'll notice we now get something which looks a little bit like this and actually i've just realized why it wasn't working it, it wasn't to do with the size of it not covering the cube it was the camera 
the camera wasn't in the post process volume. I completely forgot that for some reason. This is the first thing I've done in Marvel this morning, so you have to excuse me for forgetting that. But the post process affects the camera that is inside of it, so the camera actually has to be in it like so, which is why if we were to untick infinite extent, or tick it, sorry, so it is infinite extent, we can now see it from anywhere, and it will be affecting these other cubes if these ones have render custom depth on them as well like so. So now we get something which looks like this and this is now working perfectly for us. So sorry about that at the end if it wasn't too great that was just me forgetting some basic stuff so really sorry about that uh, but we have got it sorted like this and again you saw you can just change these values like this. So what we can do as well is if we were to right click on our material create a material instance and then use that one in the post process volume instead what we can do is I was using this one then change the material over like this so we're now using the instance we can open the instance and we can just change the values from within here instead hold on let me just open this like so we can now just change the values in here so we can tick all of these and then just change them so we can increase these like this to have it perfectly how we want so it's a lot easier to change like this. So I'm just going to reset these all back to default though, like so. So I think that'll be it for this video. As we've done everything we've wanted to do, this is very easy to customize as well. So again, you can change the color and the intensity and everything which I've just shown you. And you can also change when these will be highlighted. So if you want it to just be when you're close enough or when you're hovering over it or anything like that, that's very easy to set up. I won't be doing that in this video as this has already gone on for quite a bit of time. Uh, so sorry about that but if you do want further videos explaining that or you just want personal one-on-one -on -one help you can just leave a comment down below or message me on discord or email anything along those lines and i'll be happy to help out or create a video and again what we've gone over today is we've created a highlighting and outline object material in which is going to create something which looks a little bit like this and you can obviously see it through walls like this as well so you know where things are so for example this might be good if you want to highlight players if you've got like an x-ray or anything along those lines. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.